that's our next challenge here. Um, <clears throat> so let's just say we have two optical systems. We get our, our 1 over Q out right here from the output of our second optical system, and we want to know what Z and W naught are. How do we go about doing that? Um, well, the way we do it is we simply define 1 over Q out as a real part and imaginary part. I'm calling it X plus J Y there. Um, and I know that's equal to this. And so I know that R of Z is defined by 1 over X. W squared of Z is defined by that equation right there. Um, I can rewrite my two equations that define the Gaussian beam parameters, the waist and the radius of curvature, like this. And now you'll notice I have two equations and two unknowns. I know x and y because I've calculated 1 over q out for my input q. And so I've got x and y, and the two variables I want to find are w naught and z. And I've got a w naught and a z right there. So it's a simple matter of two equations and two unknowns. The problem with this, unfortunately, is that uh, notice you've got squares, you've got all kinds of weird polynomial terms, uh, fractional polynomials and things like that. And my gut feeling is that if I go and try to spend a lot of time solving these equations, um, that I'm really going to run into trouble fairly quickly on doing this. Uh, and I'm going to spend a whole lot of time doing algebra. So uh, let's go ahead and cue the subliminal advertising, please. Yes, master. OK. And so as you can see from our subliminal sponsored advertising, one way to solve this problem, and I'm going to give you an example of this, and this can be done by hand. You can actually do it without uh, too much difficulty, although it does take some time, is to use MATLAB. And I want to give you and go down sort of a side alley here and give you an example of how MATLAB can help you solve problems like this. I wrote a little bit of MATLAB code, and you can copy this. Um, and this is using the symbolic toolbox. So I'm setting up some symbolic variables with the sims command here. So type help sims or doc sims if you need to learn how to use this. And then all I'm doing is I'm taking these two equations. Let's go ahead and erase all this stuff here. Um, I'm taking my equation for w of z, and I'm simply typing it right here. I'm taking my equation for r of z. I'm putting it right there, and I'm using the symbolic solve command. And once I use the symbolic solve command, uh, that actually generates a symbolic array, and I have to use some other MATLAB commands to get out. But in these few lines of code, MATLAB will go ahead and tell me what the solution to this is. And so let's go on to the next slide. And if you run this, uh, this essentially is what my MATLAB output looked like. And so notice I've got expressions for W naught uh, that are plus and minus, as I would expect if I solve polynomial equations, and for Z. And so you can plug your values of X and Y in here and get the new minimum beam waste and get how far away from the output of your optical system it is this. Or if you wish, you can do the algebra by hand. Um, and so let's go through this, because this is an algorithmic step. And if you want to go and basically plug into z for this equation, and I'm just substituting values for x and y here, this is what you get for z. Uh, once you find z, you plug it in as w of z using this equation. Once you get w of z, you solve another polynomial expression for w naught. That's essentially this equation right here. And then you verify that the answer makes sense. Because remember, you've got a plus and a minus term right here. And you have to see if which answer is really the one that physically makes sense. Because one of them will and one of them won't. Um, so this is essentially the procedure for which you can apply the ABCD matrix theory to Gaussian beams to calculate how a laser beam will be changed through by an optical system, which is a very powerful thing. And in fact, I use this in my research all the time. Uh, but you have to remember there are some limitations of ABCD theory. And I'm going to go over this again. We've seen it before, so you can stop right here if you remember this. Um, but if you don't, it's probably worth reading. Now, remember that the ABCD, ABCD matrix theory, or the ray matrix theory, is defined for an ideal lens uh, with phase fronts that are perfectly spherical. And so the ray matrix for this ideal lens, we know, is that. <coughs> um, and Essentially, what it says is the rays start on the axis and end on the axis. So the axis of our optical system has to run through the center of our optic. This will not work if your lens is shifted. The theory just doesn't apply there if you're not hitting the center of your lens. Um, it also assumes the paraxial approximation. 
so that the angle the beam hit, makes coming in and hitting the lens is such that theta is equal to sine of theta is equal to tangent theta, which is good to about 30 degrees or good to about 10 degrees and okay to about 30 degrees. That means, of course, if you have a very strongly curved lens like this, um, that the ABCD theory is questionable to apply to a laser beam for tight focusing. Um, uh, certainly, if we have a system with aberrations uh, or we really fill a lens all the way to the edge with a laser beam, then there's going to have to be a more advanced treatment we're going to go into. And in fact, I don't know what the ray matrix for aberrated system is. Uh, that's probably in the literature somewhere, but I don't know it. But remember, there are limitations to the ABCD theory, and it's only good if your laser beam is on the axis of your optical system and if the curvature of the lens is not huge compared to the angle of the ray coming in, such as the paraxial approximation.